Hi there, Antonia. My name is Ellen. I'll be correcting this essay for you today. I'm very glad to see that you've gotten an essay correction with us. I understand that you've taken the IELTS and you rather you took it um, you took it recently, didn't get the score you needed. So let's take a look at this essay today and see, um, you know, maybe we can understand what's happening with your writing. Um, You've sent us a task two. It would be nice, of course, if you could also send us a task one. That's um, very helpful. Task one seems pretty straightforward, but in fact, it's not. And so it's very helpful. It's very important to have um, an examiner or an ex-examiner look at your task one to see maybe what you're doing that is keeping you from getting the score that you need. All right, so um, let's get straight into this correction. Um, this is about the former prisoners talking to youngsters about crime. Let's see what you said. Jane Austen knew that in order to be a good author, one should write about the things one knows. For a person to relate to characters and their behavior, it is key that these are presented authentically. Who then is more suitable to explain the repercussions of illegal deeds to young people than former prisoners themselves? I share this opinion to a large extent, but encourage additional measures for crime prevention. Okay, well, so far, this is wonderful. I really like this. Um, I have to admit, I was a little um, concerned when I saw the reference to Jane Austen. I didn't know how you were associating Jane Austen with crime, but, you know, I said, okay. Um, no, so I thought it was lovely. Um, so we understand that you're going to talk about... Um, you know, why you think, in fact, former prisoners are the best people to talk to youngsters. And apparently you're also going to share with us other methods for crime prevention. So let's see what you actually did. To begin with, teenagers in danger of getting on the wrong path often find themselves in difficult situations, such as a violent home, dire need for money, or a problematic friend group. I strongly believe that illegal actions like robbery and theft are their last resort. A story of the transformative experience of years in imprisonment will do little to change the environment that forces these young people to take such measures. However, if the ex-criminal relates the circumstances that lead to his crime, it might resonate with some of the at-risk teenagers. In that case, it is vital to provide supportive information on institutions to whom the youngsters can turn to get help. Okay, I have a couple of concerns about this paragraph. I do want to read your next one uh, before I get into that, though. Okay, to continue, telling these stories has an effect on the storytellers themselves. They might be forced to relive traumatic experiences. While this certainly increases the emotional aspect and might have a long-lasting impression on listeners, it can be detrimental for the former criminal. Relating his or her experiences over and over again might make them remember why they committed a crime in the first place and have substantial effects on their mental health. This certainly is a disadvantage of letting imprisoned people share their experiences. However, proper, sorry, proper psychological support can minimize this. In conclusion, I encourage the idea of letting people who experience the consequences of crime commitment, we don't really say this expression, crime commitment, uh, themselves tell teenagers about them. The relatability that comes with actually living through the hardship of imprisonment and what initially drove criminals into illega illegality might leave a lasting impression on young people who are in danger of this themselves. Combined with social support for both potential and former criminals, this experience sharing can be beneficial in long-term crime prevention. Okay, so, um, the good news is, is that the um, accuracy and the level of your language, very, very high. All right, consistently very high, flawless, very, very good. Some really nice natural vocabulary, um, wonderful grammar. It was a pleasure to read, really. So um, for that reason, I understand why you were confused with your band six. However, um, there were some issues with this. While I'm pretty certain it would um, score very, very high in both 
uh, grammatical range and accuracy and lexical resource. I do think it had some issues as far as task achievement and coherence and cohesion are concerned. So what did we say in the beginning? We said um, that you believe that criminals are in fact the best people. Um, but then you said that there should be other uh, measures for crime prevention. I didn't really see that, okay? Um, so you said something here. It is vital to provide supportive information on institutions to whom the youngsters can turn to to help. That's the only sentence in this entire essay that led me to say, okay, well, maybe that's related to this. Maybe. But that's not enough. I mean, the way when you have a thesis statement, because you, know, you probably know that this is called your thesis statement, um, this pretty much is the blueprint for how you're going to develop your essay. So reading this, I thought, okay, well, Antonia is going to talk about why she thinks this is um, the most effective thing in one paragraph. And then, or a very effective thing in one paragraph. And then in another paragraph, she's going to tell us what other things she think are as effective or perhaps even more effective. Okay. That's why what you write here is really important. It acts like a map. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a blueprint essentially that tells the reader what he or she is going to read. Uh, this sentence isn't enough. Okay, you have to do more than just this, which brings me to my next concern. Um, and this is partially coherent. This is partially task achievement, but mostly it's coherence and cohesion. Um, I found it difficult to locate a central idea in this paragraph. And I want to encourage you to look at the band descriptors for task two and see what happens. What score does that give you? Um, there's, you'll see that um, from one score and above, it says a central idea. Uh, there is a clear central idea in each paragraph, or each paragraph has a clear central idea. I think it's written like that. Um, if you don't have a clear central idea, then it's going to take you to the band lower than that. Okay. So take a look and you'll see where that puts you as far as coherence and cohesion is concerned. Um, now, why do I say it was unclear to me? Well, first of all, you didn't have a clear topic sentence. So I didn't know what this paragraph was about. I really didn't. Um, I, it seems to me that this is what you thought this paragraph was about. Okay. That if the ex criminal relates the circumstances that lead to his crime, it might resonate with some of the at risk teenagers, but the rest of the paragraph is not really about this. You were really just talking about young, you were talking about teenagers and illegal activities. So there was no clear central idea. Okay. Um, you had one paragraph, which you had, I'm sorry, you had one sentence, which talked about why the uh, ex criminal would be effective. And then you had one sentence, which talked about other things that could be effective. So this is not a well-organized paragraph, okay? A well-organized paragraph would have a topic sentence where you essentially introduce what the main idea of that paragraph is, and then you would spend the rest of that paragraph developing that main idea. So um, it should have been, based on what you wrote, that, you know what? Having ex-criminals talk to teenagers is very effective. Why? Well, number one, because they um, could talk about circumstances that resonate with some at-risk teenagers. Um, you know, for many teenagers, committing a crime is the last resort. So if a ex-convict talks about similar circumstances, uh, a youngster could identify with these circumstances and then realize that they're going down a very dangerous path. Okay, so that's how you could have developed this. So ideas that are linked to each other logically. All right. Um, okay. So like I said, this, um, you're going to see that this paragraph, uh, just, just this paragraph, even not, I mean, without even talking about the next one, um, this is enough to lower your score for both task achievement and coherence and cohesion. Task achievement, 
because the two main ideas that you told us you were going to talk about, you didn't develop them. You didn't develop them at all. Okay. And then um, in addition to that, you've got this paragraph that doesn't have a central idea. So you're going to see this um, affect both of those scores. Okay. Um, now, here, this wasn't related to anything because now you've got the sentence here um, where you tell us that this is a disadvantage of letting imprisoned people share their experiences. Nowhere did you tell us that you were going to tell us the disadvantages. Again, I had a very difficult time understanding what your central idea was. I should have been made aware of the central idea in that first sentence. It's the easiest, clearest, especially for the purposes of IELTS, the, the easiest way to, to, to have that happen, to make sure that the reader knows what your central idea is. Okay. So what you could have done, you could have taken this sentence, okay, and said, uh, however, there are certainly disadvantages of letting former imprisoned people share their experiences. For example, um, these stories often have an effect on the storytellers themselves. They may be forced to relive traumatic experiences, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So here again, you've got a problem with, um, the, um, organization of your ideas. Okay. But what else, the other thing that's problematic for me is that you didn't tell us that you were going to talk about this here. You didn't tell us that you were going to talk about the, um, disadvantage of this. Okay, because remember what you told us um, here. You said, I encourage uh, additional measures. Well, you're not encouraging different additional measures there. You're simply telling us what is um, not effective about the measure that is being supported. Okay, so that's what's, that's what's happening with this essay. Um, issues with task achievement and coherence and cohesion. And as far as task two is concerned, that's what's going uh, to keep you from getting the score that you're probably expecting. So um, that pretty much brings us to the end of this correction. As I said, I really would like to see what you're doing with task one. Um, that would be some really, really helpful information because task one also has, um, you know, some kind of dangerous slippery slopes that if you're not aware of them, uh, you can also find yourself getting a score uh, lower than you would like. Um, so I want to encourage you, Antonia, to um, sign up for some more essay corrections with us um, if you found this particular one helpful. Um, I'd love to continue working with you. I think that what we're looking at here is really just um, issues with test-taking skills. So it's writing skills. It's not language skills. You have the language skills. So that puts you in a wonderful position because these writing skills are a lot easier to acquire than the actual, um, you know, grammar or vocabulary needed to do well. So I think that together we can definitely help you get to where you need to be. Um, I hope to see more work from you. I want to wish you lots and lots of luck.